This is the first impression video of the Chinese period drama Ming Dynasty, Da Ming Fenghua. Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where Junkian good storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. Are you surprised to see me during Christmas when people are supposed to be off and having a good time? Well, <laughs> this is YouTube. YouTube never stops and never rests. Today, I try my best to make myself look a little bit Ming Dynasty. Although, don't take this as a textbook look of Ming Dynasty. It is still quite far away from a very hardcore researched Ming look. Personally, I think probably Tang Dynasty style is more friendly to people like me who literally just don't have neck. The drama is led by Tang Wei, Zhu Yawen, Wang Xueqi, Liang Guanhua, Yu Haoming. Later, as the second generation of the main characters, you will also come across Zhang Yixing. So this is actually a pretty hardcore cast. The drama is being aired about one to two episodes a day in China, depending on whether it's the weekdays or weekends. And as it is being aired on Hunan TV, it has been butchered in every way possible in terms of editing. So I'm not even trying to guess what is the original editing of this drama in terms of when each episode ends. In this video, I want to first talk about the things I really like about this drama and why I think it might be a good drama to watch. Then I'm gonna talk about the things that I have problems with. It also has a lot to do with Ming Dynasty history, so if you're interested in that part, stay with me until then. I think the most interesting part of the drama is the acting. Coming from this ensemble of actors who are all very good at doing what they do. The best way I can explain it is it's like an ancient time setting sitcom of a very weird family with the grandfather, the son's generation, the grandson's generation, and their wives and all the people around them. If you take that position of looking at this drama as a family drama with quite a lot of comedy sprinkled in it, it's actually pretty enjoyable because all these actors are playing into that pace and rhythm and that overall really fun tone very well. The actor who played the crown prince, Liang Guanhua, he, um, he's very adored by Chinese drama audiences. Uh, he hasn't been in a lot of things for a long time. He used to have this series that is so well loved by most Chinese people that I think a lot of people are just happy to see him in a drama. And his role is quite adorable <laughs> in this drama. If you initially thought this is some um, imperial court serious stuff, then <laughs> you are in for a surprise. The only thing that often slightly pulled me out of the story is I think most of the characters got ADR'd by themselves, voiced their own characters in post-production. You have the problem when their voice do not 100% sync with their lips, especially to do with Tang Wei's role. Very often you see that her facial expression doesn't fit her voice that she dubbed herself. Sometimes the voice sounded too emotional where the face is not as emotional and vice versa. So if you don't speak Mandarin, you may not be able to catch that as easily as I do. So it may not bother you as much, but even till now, after I've watched all the episodes that have aired till today, I'm making the video. It still bothers me. But all in all, the acting of this drama is really good. It's actually quite fun. So if you're in for that, this is a relatively well-written and relatively well-acted one. And the second part, talking about the history of Ming Dynasty and I think the problem with this drama, I do not believe period dramas have to always stay absolutely authentic to recorded history. That's not necessary, but it's important for drama to positioning itself correctly. This drama is really unfortunate that um, it started filming at the end of 2017 and it started promoting at the end of last year, right around this time. And at that time, they said this is a zhengju. Historical zhengju in Chinese just means it's a serious drama. You have to be 80, 90% accurate to history. They were thinking about putting it out last year, probably, but then they ran into 2019, huge restriction on period drama. So it was basically delayed for an entire year. And by the time they started to put out promotion this time around, they didn't really emphasize on um, being a historical. But a lot of people remembered their previous promotion, which is clearly said, stated, this is a zhengju. And when it comes out, it immediately got people go, what? Because it's not really accurate to history in so many places, resulting in a lot of history fans just have the worst things to say about this drama. As a drama, as an entertainment work, this is not 
bad, it has positioned itself really not correctly. If you're going to watch this drama, please just take it as an entertainment piece. Do not think it actually represents Min Dynasty in any way. There's a lot of inaccuracy in this portrayal, in all the details, in sets, in costumes. You can tell certain costumes are actually researched or based on certain research. If the whole thing full length is 100 meters, they only went 10. They were like, we're only gonna take that much from our research and everything else, we're gonna fill it up with our imagination. So it ended up being very weird things. It's like, yeah, that clothes, that robe roughly looks like something from Min Dynasty, but then it's paired up with a not so accurate belt. Or, you know, this character looks uh, roughly like from Min Dynasty, but the person standing right next to him looks like, where do you come from? Also, like the guys always have those hair that's pulled out, you know, like all in those weird places, like the emperor in Joy of Life. It's a little bit too much. You are a imperial family member. You need to look immaculate at all times. And there's actually a crime if you're in front of the emperor and you didn't, you know, like dress up properly or your stuff fall out of place. It's a crime. You can get punished by that. You know, these things are a little bit too casual for historical drama to for you to take it seriously. There are two major things that really made people go very unhappy about its portrayal of that particular time of Ming Dynasty history. One being the uh, visual representation of Zhu Yanzhang, the first emperor of Ming Dynasty who founded Ming Dynasty in that really uh, terrible painting and also the prosthetics for the actor who played him. I mean, back then there was no camera, so you cannot really prove whether the official portrait of Zhu Yanzhang passed down in history are accurate to what he actually looks like. Most likely these portraits will have some brushing up. It's like ancient Photoshop to make people look better. But I think it's reasonable to assume it will still be based on the real look of the person because Zhu Yanzhang actually has multiple portraits painted in his lifetime. There's the ones that when he was younger and older, if you compare them, you can tell it's the same person. It just, the person aged. Whereas that portrait that gets used in the drama and also the actor who got fake chains to, to look like that painting has been proven to be fake. And that comes from a very weird portrait that actually happened years and decades after he he was dead by people who never really went in the palace. So, you know, it's like imaginative drawing the different versions of the story of how that happened. Some people say it's an intentional misrepresentation of this emperor just to make him look ugly. And there are other saying about the fact that um, in ancient China, people believe very big, historical figures who are born with some unusual quality and often people believe they would look different from normal people. Zhu Yuanzhang was born a peasant. He was from a very low background. He had nothing, no money, no power. He was a beggar for a while. He was like a, a kind of a monk, not really a monk, but because he cannot survive. He went to a temple to work under monk to be able to feed himself. He comes from the most humble background possible and he becomes an emperor. That portrait could also be coming from people's imagination of someone who's achieved that much in his life, who needs to look just different. For drama that titled itself Ming Dynasty and Da Ming Funghua, it is just a little bit careless that the research team and whoever was in charge of doing this decided to go for that much less historically reliable version of this emperor's looks. And frankly, it's a really bad prosthetic and looks really horrible and terrifying. The second big discrepancy with actual history is the female lead characters in this drama. Spoilers ahead, your drama watching may get spoiled as well as um, some historical stuff. So it's like a double spoiler for you. Historically, Zhu Zhanji, Ming Xuanzong, played by Zhu Yawen in this drama, had two empresses. The first one is Hu Huanghou, played by Deng Jiajia in this drama. The second one is Sun Huanghou, played by by Tang Wei. He married both women before he became emperor. Hu was his official wife and Sun was his concubine. When he ascended the throne, he titled the official wife empress, his concubine Sun as Gui Fei, so a quite high title as concubine as well. In later years, he disposed the empress Hu and then elevated 
concubines went to be the second empress. In recorded history, the reason given to dispose of first empress is because she never had a son. Otherwise, she really has no misconduct in her life. And in Zhu Zhanji's later years, he did kind of regret about that decision because he knows the empress didn't do anything wrong. And when the empress was disposed, she was still living in the palace. She was like given the title of a highest of rank nun and still lived in the palace until the end of her day. What is drama? <laughs> Just took full liberty is making these two people sisters. <laughs> sisters, real like 100% sisters, just totally irrelevant and not realistic to history. One of them is from Hu family, the other from Sun family, not related, and neither of them has anything to do with Jing Nanji, the war that separated them in the drama's version. So that's why I say you can only take this drama as a fun entertainment piece. It really is very far from history, probably for the sake of a dramatic effect. I just feel it's a, it's a small pity because this type of we are actually real sisters. We got separated and we eventually ended up in palace again and fighting for the same man's affection kind of story is old. Don't you have something better to imagine to write in 2019? You know, it's not like 20 years ago. We've seen too many dramas using that old trope. It just feels really stale and unimaginative. So if you want to go into this drama, enjoy it. It's pretty enjoyable. The acting, the storyline is, is pretty enjoyable. Just don't take it seriously at all. I'm actually really curious to see what's gonna happen later in the drama when Zhu Zhanji becomes the emperor and then dies because he dies very young historically. And then his son, which is also Sun Rouwei's son, although debatable in history because there's two versions. One is like the son is actually hers. The other one is adopted by her. So we'll see how this drama deals with that. And that will be Zhang Yixing's character. And that will lead to the most epic part of Ming mean, Dynasty history. The emperor got captured by enemy. <laughs> He's taken hostage. Very similar to Song Dynasty history, and that would be Ming Yingzong and then Jing Taidi's story, which if you've watched Nu Yi Ming Fei Zhuan, basically Zhang Yixing's character in this drama is Wallace Ho's character in that drama. And that plot is definitely gonna be very interesting to watch. And I, I'm curious to see how this drama is gonna spin that part of the history, whether it's gonna stay relatively close to what actually went down in history or Fang Fei Zuo. Let itself fly away and just go crazy with it. That is my first impression opinion on the drama Ming Dynasty, Da Ming Feng Hua. Hopefully that's useful for you to make a decision whether you want to invest your time and energy going into this drama. And if you've already watched the drama, do let me know what you think of it. Thank you for watching Amulex. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.